The way that our mind works is that our thoughts create associations that spread out. And so the more we try and control our thoughts, the more associations it creates. And typically these associations are very similar in nature. So by that I mean that if you have a negative thought, it is very unlikely that you will suddenly attach to a positive thought or a positive thought will follow that negative thought. It is more likely that the initial negative thought will attach to or uh, find a similar thought, which will also be negative. And typically it creates a snowball effect because it's um, finding similar patterns uh, and it's via association. So the more we relax and observe our thoughts without trying to get rid of them in the first place, and the more that we learn to let go, the more we disconnect from these associations or the more the associations back off and aren't created in the first place or are weakened. So what we experience from this is subsequently greater relaxation, ease and less distress. So remember, what we resist does persist. So the more that we fight our initial negative thinking, the more it uh, kicks back or the more it will occur and reoccur because you are essentially placing all of your energy there and you're placing your focus there. You're in essence directing your brain to zone in, to zoom in, to amplify and expand upon the very thing that you are trying to resist and fight. However, the catchphrase that a lot of people are told to just ignore it or just ignore your tinnitus, you will be fine. It does not suffice in explaining how to do this. So it does not help. The fact that the initial catchphrase, just ignore it, doesn't help, it does not mean that it is untrue, however. There is a lot of truth within that phrase, to just ignore it, uh, albeit relatively unhelpful on the surface. So what really needs to happen is uh, more techniques and more education and more guidance surrounding the phrase, just ignore it, surrounding the uh, issue of how to do this, how to let go, how to rehabilitate, how to uh, step away from the increase in anxiety and the depression, all the side effects that come with this experience. But the ultimate message here is that because of the way that our brain operates and is designed and is wired, because of uh, the, our primal instinct that we, our thoughts, naturally attract similar thoughts and it does create a snowball effect, you can see why. The anxiety that is experienced with tinnitus or hyperacusis or misophonia, that those initial, ne that negative uh, spiral that is created in our thinking, we see why it is very natural to go down that uh, rabbit hole of hell. Uh, and we really need to learn how to step away from that and step out of that and climb out of that. And that does. Uh, from my observations, require guidance in order to do that. It is, a, it is very hard to do that alone. This message is also putting forward the, the idea, and I believe the truth, that the phrase of just ignore it, there is truth within it, because when you are able to ignore it, when you are able to detach from it, your body will respond accordingly by reducing the distressing symptoms in the first place. And that is pure biology. That is purely uh, how our anatomy works, how our phys physiology works. But the key is how do we just ignore it? How do we train ourselves to step out of that uh, anxiety, negative thinking cycle? That all being said, I'm sure now you can, to some degree, great or small, when your practitioner says to you or a practitioner says to you, just ignore it 
although at the time they do sound like an absolute ignoramus by saying that uh, and with very little empathy or sensitivity, uh, I hands down agree with this. It should never be, be that phrase should never be used in a clinical space with that, um, in that light. But in essence, it is quite an accurate phrase to use when we look at the neurophysiology of tinnitus, hyperacusis and misophonia. It is quite an accurate phrase to use to that degree clinically. Albeit it is unhelpful on the surface, but there is a lot of truth within that. What I believe should be done is that that phrase, just ignore it, should be um, edited to instill within it empathy and humanity and understanding that it is very unhelpful unless you also immediately following provide the patient or the person with tools in order to learn how to ignore it, how to step away from that anxiety spiral, how to guide their thinking, their emotionality surrounding their physical experience because without those tools they have nothing to work with and the phrase is absolutely useless and also very harmful and damaging to that person. It only makes things worse. But I'm here to play good cop and bad cop and look at the argument with as much objectivity as I possibly can in this space. And the way that I see it is that that phrase, although it is has been applied with a lot of uh, damaging side effects and it has been thrown around without uh, enough connection to humanity and the reality of what people are going through, the essence of that phrase is actually quite true when we are looking at how the cycle perpetuates and what must be done in order to break that cycle of distress is to actually learn how to step away from it, to detach from that, that thinking style, to detach from the distress, to ignore it. But it is the how. How do we ignore it? That must be emphasised in our treatment plans and articulated to every single patient with this.